Hi everybody. It's on or about 6.30 so I'll call this meeting to order and just ask everyone to please silence uh, cell phones and other electronic devices. I'll do that as well. <clears throat> we'll start out with a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Bateman. The Council amend the agenda to suspend Section 7, Delegations and Presentations, Section 8, Citizens Comment, and Section 17, Question Period, from the March 16th, 2020 agenda, and add 9.7, a staff report suspending Council meetings for March and April, and 9.8, the deferral of, uh, d to defer due dates for taxes and water wastewater invoices, and 9.9, .9, a discussion around committees of Council. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Council Rowley, that the agenda be amended to add 15.3 correspondence from the DBIA and the Brian Todd Memorial uh, community fund re-local student art project and 18.1 uh, uh, closed matter uh, subject advice so that is subject to solicitor client privilege specifically HR policy information as it relates to COVID-19. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motions carried. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Council LeBlanc, that Council approve the March 16th, 2020 Council meeting agenda as amended. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. We're all spread out so far. I don't know who I'm looking at. <laughs> Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. Deputy Mayor. I'll be declaring on uh, enclosed 18.1 um, because I have business dealings with with the organization. I guess I can explain more enclosed. Is that correct? Uh, you can explain more when you're when you declare in the closed session if you want to yes. explain more. Thank you. Is that 18? Is that the first one? C. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other declarations? Thank you. Are there any announcements? Unnoted. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Council LeBlanc, that Council approve the March 2nd, 2020 Council meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. And I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council approve the March 9th, 2020 planning meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. And we have suspended the delegation. Sorry, we have no statutory public meeting. We have removed delegations and citizens' comment. So we move straight into staff reports. Uh, the first one is uh, the 2019 Wastewater Pollution Control Plant Annual Report. Uh, I assume that's yours, Mr. Parkinson. I haven't opened my agenda here, so I'm going to ask you to speak to it if you have anything to comment on. Not at this time. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Council LeBlanc. The Council received the 2019 Wastewater Pollution Control Plan Annual Report as information. Is there any discussion? Council LeBlanc. Through you, Chair <coughs> Preston, I <coughs> I just have a few questions. I don't know if you can answer. And but there's a few corrections, like Table One. It should be average instead of annual. But on the trials and the uh, volatile suspended solids that you did over two years. And when you got the suspended solids over 300 milligrams, basically you didn't have a problem with ammonia. Your ammonia was all well below, around 97, 98% removal. And you did it three years in a row. 
Was this passed on to the engineer that designed the MBBR? I don't have that information at hand, but uh, the engineer you speak of has been looking after that facility for, I think, almost four years now. So he would have been part of that information. Uh, he's the one that built those testings to decant to try to increase our solids. And he was part of the biodome project and all that. So he, he likely populated that information or created it or uh, was at the very least informed of it. Go ahead. So, when you look at your compliance levels for ammonia, when you look at your winter months and summer months, and when they did do the test, every time that they did do the test, and they brought it to close to 300 milligrams of VSS, they were all within compliance in the aeration chamber. So a normal aeration chamber like that runs somewhere between 12 and 1600. Did they ever look at bringing it to 12 to 1600? Uh, I don't know if they did. Uh, it's not part of our annual compliance report. Uh, this is just the information to inform uh, the ministry on how it performed. But uh, if you want that information, then we can look into it and, and respond back to you if you want to send an email through. To you? Yeah, I will. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cadman? Uh, through you and to whoever, uh, would it be um, maybe a good idea that we have Mr. Graham come back and explain some of these things at some point? Because there are a lot of people, I don't know if they've even met uh, the consultant that does this work. That's entirely up to council. Would, would council like to see Mr. Graham come in and talk about the uh, sewage treatment plant? I would. Well, you're one. <laughs> okay, there's two. Go ahead. We haven't seen him for a while. Um, right. I don't know. Has he talked to this new term of council before? Okay. Might be a good idea. Just Mr. Castleman, could we ask Mr. Graham to come in uh, at some point in the future, not near, <laughs> but future, and talk yeah. to us about the sewage treatment plan. <laughs> Councillor Tadman. Well, I just think, uh, especially since uh, Councillor LeBlanc seems to have lots of knowledge on this, and he has questions that, that it really isn't fair for um, okay. Preston to answer at this point. Very so. well. No, we'll get, uh, and, and I know Councillor Bateman was being tongue-in-cheek, but it might very well be July, but we'll, we'll get him in uh, at, at it, earliest opportunity. I agree with this report. It's just information that was yep. in this report and the previous one from last year and the one from before, so I, I consolidated all three. But the data that's here makes me ask a bunch of questions. And, and it was very nice on all the questions. I think, more. I think the Council has uh, um, uh, is aware that you have intimate knowledge of the system and, and the you know, this stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get Mr. And we don't. And so we'll get Mr. Graham in and, and have him talk to us. What's that? No, no, it's not a lawyer. It's an engineering um, consultant. And Mr. Castleman will, will manage to get him in for us at some point. So we have a motion on the floor receiving the information, the annual report. Uh, is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. The next report is with regard to the rubber tire excavator purchase. Mr. Parkinson, we read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Not at this time. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Council LeBlanc, seconded by Council Rowley. The Council approved the purchase of a new Caterpillar M318F rubber tire excavator with implements in the amount of $381,000 plus HST. Is there any discussion? Council LeBlanc. To you, Chair, to Director Parks and Rex, when you say it comes with all the attachments, what attachment does it come with? In the analysis part of the report, it details all the attachments. So it's the digging bucket, a ditching bucket, a ProMac brush cutter, a hydraulic thumb, and the power tilt grab unit. Just in the third paragraph, the analysis and comment. The first page. And it's then it's, a, it's also detailed yeah. in the tender. It's the third paragraph of the report that's in uh, that's in our package. Is there any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. Our next report is with regard to the Mount Hope Cemetery bylaw. Mr. Silvestro, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? I just want to point out that I believe that the bylaw in section, um, under the bylaws section, did not get updated to the one that is attached in the report. The report is the correct bylaw. Thank you. So the report is the correct bylaw, but in the bylaw section, it is not the correct bylaw. Is that, that's, that's correct. That's what you're saying? Thank you. Yes. I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley, that Council approve the draft bylaw to provide for rules and regulations for the care and control of the Mount Hope Cemetery. That the draft cemetery bylaw be sent for approval by the Bereavement Authority of Ontario prior to ratification at a future meeting of Council. That sufficient notice pertaining to the filing of the bylaw of the bylaw change as outlined in the legislation be circulated to any suppliers who have used services of the cemetery in the last 12 months, posted on site at the cemetery locations as well as on the municipal website and local newspaper. And further, staff recommend to council that bylaw 043-2016 and any other bylaws or resolutions or parts of bylaws or resolutions relating to the rules and regulations for the operation care and control of municipality-owned cemeteries inconsistent with this bylaw are hereby repealed. Is there any discussion? Councillor Rowley. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming that this is just for municipally owned, just for Mount Hope at this time. Will the um, other cemeteries, are, would their bylaws um, or their constitutions look the same? Do they have to comply as, as we do or... Um, is this is just just specifically Brayton, Mr. Silvestro? This bylaw that we've written is specifically for Mount Hope, and I have heard that we will probably get some more cemeteries as we go forward. When we when and if we do get those cemeteries, then this bylaw will extend to them. This is more comprehensive than what the board had, so uh, that was why we really updated it. Does this also include uh, inactive cemeteries owned by the municipality? It does not. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion's carried. The next staff report is with regard to reduced loads by law. Mr. McGee, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Not at this time. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Council LeBlanc. The Council receives the report dated March 16, 2020, being a bylaw to temporarily reduce loads on municipal roads during a specific period. And further, that Council passes a reduced a reduce loads bylaw to temporarily reduce loads on municipal roads during a specific period. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman. Just more for informational purposes, because I understand this. Do our urban and rural roads have different load restrictions at any time? Or when there is no load restrictions, is it the same for in town and out of town? Just more curiosity than anything. Mr. Parkinson? <laughs> um, yeah, typically there's no load restrictions within the urban limits. There might be the odd exception in Brighton. I, I haven't come across one yet, but typically it's your secondary municipal roads in, uh, in the rural environment. Councillor Tadman? Just a little housekeeping thing. I, I, I think um, where it says background purpose, that first line, reduced load restrictions are placed on trucks, maybe on truck loads. In, in the report itself? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Councillor Anderson? I have a question uh, for our bylaw. Um, Smith Street has a sign that shows a truck with it, no truck, like no trucks. Is that like half load or is that mean no trucks? Mr. Uh, McGee? Through you, Your Worship, uh, that is indicating that there's no trucks, no commercial vehicles permitted on that road at all. 
Um, that's our, another thing that Press and I are working on, getting a bylaw for that because there's several roads that do not permit commercial trucks. So that's what that sign means. Yeah. So I'm not making any point of anything, but it is well traveled by trucks. Uh, it used to be uh, gravel trucks, and that, at least there was a stop to that at one time, and uh, that that got corrected. But right now, there's big semis going down there. It's not because of the 401 or anything like that. It's they they park on the street. There's uh, and the, our, those streets are now pretty soft right now. I notice, and Smith Street is cracking up, and it's just because of time. But uh, uh, we have a sign there, but I just didn't realize how it's being enforced or. Or how is it being enforced? Uh, once well, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not here to talk about oh, uh, no, no no truck zones. This is just the reduced. This is just the reduced loads uh, bylaw. Okay. So we heard that a bylaw will be coming forward to um, deal with those roadways that are are no commercial truck traffic permitted on them, and so we'll have that discussion. So then. the so the point tonight is is about Re reduced loads, half loads. So will that street? Okay, I can. Will that road have a reduced? A reduced. Will Smith road? Street have a reduced? Is is Smith Street one of the roadways earmarked for this? Um, staff have already issued and, and put up all the signs, so it should be reduced load uh, in all those streets over there. I, I agree, but I I just so, yeah, we can take a look at you'll, you'll check in on yep. that and make sure it is. Yeah. And Councillor Anderson, your other question you could direct to the bylaw officer. Uh, off, uh, offline, yeah, sure. uh, or just directly. You can Fair have enough. a chat with them. Any further discussion, Mr. <coughs> LeBlanc? Through you, Chair. Is there any possible way to get a map or a drawing that shows where all these roads are? We have a GIS guy, Mr. Parkinson. Uh, all of the municipal roads, or just the ones you put in half loads on. Yeah, we, we could put that on the list of the GIS person. But it, it realistically it probably wouldn't be till the summertime till he gets to it. Are the are these restrictions not on all municipal roads in the in the rural area? It by and large? Might not be all of the roads. Uh, like telephone road between thirty and twenty six comes to mind. Um, but yeah, it should be on pretty much every road we have in the rural environment. But we we can get that mapped for uh, for members of council and the general public if we get yep. that on those yeah, things can. to do. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? Motion's carried. Next report is with regard to community safety zones. Again, Mr. McGee, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Not at this time. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council receives a staff report dated March 16th, 2020, being an amendment to bylaw 062-2015, Community Safety Zones in the Municipality of Brighton. And further, that Council approve the execution of the amending Schedule A of bylaw 062-2015 to designate the exact locations of the community safety zone on Dundas Street and Elizabeth Street. Is there any discussion? Councillor Rowley. Thank you. Um, my question is, I'm, uh, is the, um, the speed zones, the, the community safety, the speed zones in the safety zones, are they for school times only or is this for 365 days of the year? I believe it is all the time. Mr. McGee? Yes, I'm getting the yes from Mr. McGee. It is all the time. Okay, I, I was just going to make a suggestion, but now I won't. Thank you. There you go. All right. Anything further? Councillor Bateman? Thank you. I was just going to ask a quick question on Elizabeth Street because we briefly chatted about it at Rexall. That's been a contentious issue over the last couple of days for the number of speeders on there. Is the police service board going to bring that up to the OPP? Because I think you saw what I saw. Over 100 people got pretty heated over the speeding down past no frills. And I saw this weekend that people were getting upset because people were being pulled over on Elizabeth Street. So there was some enforcement being done, I think, on Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, anyway, this weekend. So, me too. Yeah. So, so there were there, a lot of people were being, I understand, pulled over and pulled into the no frills parking lot to get them off the road and, and being charged. So, 
<laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> Another issue. Anything further? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next report is with regard to the adoption of mutual aid by law. Chief Caddick, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just, a, just a bit of a clarification. This uh, is mainly a housekeeping issue. This uh, agreement has been in place in the, the initial bylaw, as you can see, since 2001, and it is just it is our mutual aid agreement for all fire departments in uh, Northumberland County that uh, share in this agreement. Uh, and just make to, for clarification, there, Northumberland County has no involvement within this agreement whatsoever. These are just the lower tiers of the county. That is correct. Thank yes. you. I have a motion. A motion. A motion. I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, and I'll need a seconder that Council receive the staff report regarding mutual aid between Brighton Fire and the County of Northumberland, and further that the Mayor and Council rescind bylaw number 066-2001, mutual aid bylaw, and authorize the Mayor and Council authorize the mayor and council to approve and adopt a bylaw to authorize Brighton Fire and Rescue to participate in the Northumberland County Mutual Aid Plan. Deputy Mayor, I saw you were seconding that, so it's seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink. Is there any discussion? Councillor LeBlanc. Through your chair. Would you say that it's uh, Northumberland County or the Northumberland County Plan, it says the county coordinator will direct the staff. I'm just wondering, in North Trumbling County, the, in the county, where the municipalities and the township, does the county have a fire department with equipment and a senior fire fire senior fire chief that coordinates the other seven fire chiefs what to do? Well, I think you know the answer to that question. Just yeah. but you already know the answer to that question, Chief. Go ahead. If I <laughs> threw you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, no, the county has no involvement in this. The new mutual or Northumberland County Mutual Aid Plan is only by name. Uh, it is a geographical plan. The co the coordinator is Fire Chief Tim Blake in Trent Hills. The deputy coordinator is uh, Deputy Chief Gene Thompson. It is mandated through the OFMEM for the Fire Marshal's Office, and they they decide the areas and they decide who sits and who's the coordinator. The Northumberland County has zero involvement in the operation or the implementation of the plan, so that there's no no involvement whatsoever because they they don't have a fire service, so they can't be involved. It's an agreement between the fire departments of the lower tiers of uh, in within the county of Northumberland. That is correct. Yeah, thank you. Any further, Councillor Rowley? Uh, you drew my attention to way, the way you read the uh, recommendation. Uh, should it say authorize the mayor and clerk, or is no? It, oh, I, I, I stumbled over out? it because of that. Yeah. But I think it's authorizing us then to uh, pass a bylaw later on in the meeting. Okay. We're just accepting the report, and we'll pass a bylaw okay. later on. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. As I, as I fumbled over it, I read it a little clearer in my head. So, anything further? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. And we've added three items to staff reports, all dealing with uh, issues surrounding the, our COVID-19 response. Uh, our first is with regard to council meetings, so I'll get um, CAO Castleman to speak to this if there are any questions. And I'll just read the motion and see if there are questions. I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council suspend Section 4.2 and Section 4.3 of the procedural bylaw so that no Council meetings are held during the months of March and April of 2020. Is there any discussion? Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, good idea. I do want to be clear on, you know, um, I guess... Uh, people come to us if they want information sometimes, so I just want to make sure that uh, if we do need to have a meeting, we have a meeting in order to make decisions, and also that uh, there's communication with council so that we have an idea of what's going on or any new initiatives so that we can also um, put that out to the community because when we have no idea, you know, it's kind of difficult. Fair enough. I'll certainly do my best to relay any information that comes from staff to me, um, as I have been doing um, Thank you for the nudge today. I appreciate it so that I could put that out uh, to the rest of council. I did ask the CAO, does this 
motion prevent me from calling a special meeting if we need one? The CAO said absolutely not. If we need a special meeting, uh, same rules apply. A majority of council or the mayor can call a special meeting. I suspect we will need to at some point. There, there's likely things that will come up at some point in April. Um, this really is just a, a measure to help protect the community ourselves and the community from uh, ha having to unnecessarily gather. Um, it will likely mean that later on this year, whenever things get back to normal, we're going to have some heavier agendas as we clear the dockets on some normal business things. But um, I think I think it's wise for us to uh, to go down this road at this at this stage anyway. Go ahead, Councillor Tadman. Uh, has there ever been any consideration from upper tier governments that maybe uh, we know the rules of, of of when we can have a, a meeting, whatever, but to use something viral uh, to make some important decisions is there any talk at this point to use like n not to get together but to use yeah uh, technology yeah so there um, the deputy clerk and I were having that discussion there is a um, the new municipal act does allow us to meet um, we still have to have a quorum physically present so four of us would have to meet and three people could then meet electronically so it doesn't really solve the problems yeah. um, but for right now for municipal councils we can't meet unless a quorum is act, act, actually present in the room okay which is unfortunate but they'll get there yeah, but maybe down the road they'll have to make a change I'm, I'm, in a short term. I suspect things like this will create that kind of necessity. You right. Know? Okay. Uh, so um, it's certainly on, on my mind as things get normalized to have those discussions with our uh, member of provincial parliament to talk about amendments to the municipal act as they move forward because it would be I think a good idea um, uh, you know I don't know any of us who work in business who don't do teleconferencing for example and make decisions sometimes fairly significant ones over the phone and, and by Skype or other electronic means so uh, I think it is a, a tomorrow thing but um, the province of Ontario we're always about 50 years behind so <laughs> Go ahead. Just to follow up on that, there, there's some um, difficult decisions sometimes in especially boards. So they may have to consider, you know, um, at, for for a short period of time. I'm not talking about indefinitely, but... Right, so so we will be talking about committees and boards okay. uh, coming up and um, we'll talk, we'll speak to that because okay. I think that's, those rules are a little looser. Um, or they're about to become a little looser as we as we suspend a particular item in our procedural bylaw that may permit some of our committees to meet electronically. Okay, thanks. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion's carried. Nine point eight is with regard to uh, invoices and taxes. Moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council defer property tax as well as water and sewer payment due dates from April thirtieth, two thousand twenty, to May twenty ninth, two thousand twenty. Is there any discussion? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Um, again, uh, I feel it's a good idea. Um, I think that. Uh, Deferring is okay, eventually it's going to be due anyways, and I think that's the thing that we're going to run into, and I know we can't fix everything, I'm just concerned, and I'm not saying that we have to, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're, we're just, at, we're saying that we can, they can, it can be deferred, but at the end of the day, um, we're not sure what the financial impact of all of this is going to be, and I guess we can revisit if we have to, but... I agree. I, I think what we're trying to do is just offer a little a, a, a little relief at this stage while we figure out exactly what uh, what this is going to shake out to look like. Any further, Councilor Bateman? I was just going to ask: uh, Is the finance department still going to be open for those that come in to make their tax payments? We haven't made that decision to close that. As of today, yes. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. None of us do. Councilor Anderson. There you are. Did I see a hand over here? Question, but another question. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No. Oh. You're up. Was there anyone else over here? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. 9.9 is with regard to committees of council as we spoke about and it's moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc that council suspend 9.3a from our procedural bylaw for March and April 2020. 
and um, for your information that's the the item that says they have to meet physically so if we remove that then the deputy clerk will reach out to the chairs and let the chairs of committees know that they can meet electronically and uh, I believe the intent Deputy Clerk is to tell them that they are not to meet physically, but they may meet electronically. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? Meaning we could have email conversations and make decisions, or that we have to actually have a like a Zoom or a Skype meeting? I don't think we didn't discuss that. So, Deputy Clerk, what would you determine that to be? It can be emails, um, all of that. We, we, okay. We've removed the provision to meet. Because the simplest would be to, if we have to make a decision, that the chair send out an email to everyone and everyone gives their yay or nay. I just want to make sure that's okay because I think that's going to be the most reasonable, cheap, easy way to make some decisions. And that'll work like that. Perfect. And, and we'll probably keep it confined to just two of our committees, that being the Apple Fest and community events. Mm -hmm. Everything else can probably wait, of course, if something crazy comes up and we have to deal with it, like Police Service Board. Then, well, then we well this, this would not pertain no. to any uh, statutory public board right so the police services board is a, a statutory board library board is a statutory board we don't control those that, that's true yeah. we're bound by legislation and, and there on that point um, they only say four meetings a year yeah. they don't say when and how very well anything further um, just I, I would hope deputy clerk that when you're speaking to these committees that and permitting that that you would make sure that you're included on all correspondence so that there is a, a record uh, from the municipality's point of view. Absolutely, I'll probably drop agendas and things still and we'll try to have to go through it Brilliant. like that. For Apple Fest, the Deputy Mayor and I can work on yeah. that. Thank you. Councillor Tadman. And just to be clear, is it uh, boards and committees at this point that, that could possibly have meetings like electronically? So it's, it's any committee that is a committee of or board of council okay but but this doesn't apply to any statutory boards so how do they operate then? that we don't control them so they they're not they don't operate under our procedural bylaw so that would be a province decision uh, that would probably be their own bylaws so the library board for example would have its own bylaws that that tell it how to how to operate I believe the police services board operates under its own bylaws as well they actually have their own acts and yeah, their own right. legislation PSA, the right. police as, service board act so the lower library. trent would be the same the lower trent is not yeah that's right okay yeah any further all in favor any opposed the motion's carried no notices of motion or motions no unfinished business so we move into bylaws I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, and I'll need a seconder that Council gives a bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton for the management, regulation, and control of Mount Hope Cemetery. That is seconded by Council LeBlanc. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. I have a motion moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council gives a bylaw, it's first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the Municipality. Sorry. I'm reading, I'm about to read the same motion, so I'm going to need a motion with regard to the reduced loads bylaw. And if it's okay with everyone, I'm going to skip on to the next one while we get that written up. I have a motion moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council gives a bylaw, its first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw to authorize the participation of the Brighton Fire and Rescue in the County of Northumberland Mutual Aid Plan and a repeal bylaw number 066-2001. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried.
I have a motion moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council gives a bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and the Clerk to execute an agreement between the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton and Feldman Daxon Incorporated, an executive search firm for the recruitment of a Director of Planning and Development. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. I have a motion moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council gives a bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and the Clerk to execute an agreement between the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton and HVS Consulting and Valuation Services. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. How are we doing over there, Deputy Clerk? I can't. Is everyone okay if I go into Section 13 and come back to read that motion with regard to that bylaw? All right. So then we're moving into report. Oh, here it comes. Never mind. Oof, just in the nick of time. I have a motion. I'll need a mover. Oh, Councillor Tadman and Bateman, are you okay? You theoretically moved 12.2 even though the wording was wrong. I have a motion moved by Councillor Tadman. Seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council gives a bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading and passes on this date. A bylaw to reduce loads on municipal roads. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion's carried. Okay, so moving into reports of advisory committees of council, reports and minutes and council reports. Our first is the Rural Advisory Committee meeting of November 27th, and it's moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Tadman. The council received the Rural Advisory Committee meeting minutes from November 27th, 2019, as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. Our next is Digital Archives, and it's moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council received the Brighton Digital Archives Advisory Committee meeting minutes of January 28, 2020. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. We have no reports or minutes of statutory committees, boards, or external agencies, so we move into correspondence. First piece of correspondence is from the Curling Club. It's a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson. The Council supports or receives the request of the Council's agreement to act as a supporting organization for grant applications to the Brian Todd Memorial Community Fund and the Kay Stafford Foundation on behalf of the Brighton and District Curling Club to support the Junior Curling Club program. Councillor Bateman, this is your motion. Would you like to support or receive? I, I didn't circle either one because I was hoping somebody could provide some background information on it. If there's financial impact to the, what is it and the whole idea. Cause Councillor Anderson, you're the rep on the curling club, correct? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, they're looking for some funds to for the junior programs. They want to buy junior rocks. They want a number of, they're looking at shoes for, they're building the curling club uh, membership and they're bu building it from the ground up with uh, junior curlers and uh, that's where the funds will be going. I right, so the, the question is, is there a financial implication to the municipality no, by supporting not. this? They clearly, they clearly said there would not be and that's Thank what you. my understanding is. Deputy Mayor. Uh, just for clarity, they're looking for us to be a supporting organization. That's, that's all. all. That's all. Yeah. So that they can apply yep. as without charitable status. Yeah, thank Council. you. Councilor LeBlanc. Your microphone, please. They're looking for somebody that has tax exemption so it helps them out. So they can apply for a grant. I'll support. Thank you. Councilor Tadman. I guess I'm just reiterating what everybody else said, but the the fact of the matter is uh, we get asked lots of times to support organizations and, and why not? It, I mean, that doesn't guarantee they're going to get it. No. 
We're just saying yes, we support you. Understood. Anything else? Councilor Rowley? Um, just, just a question. I know that the, uh, I should, never mind. I'll just ask one of the representatives on the, on the. Thank you. Anything further? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And our next one is with regard to the Canadian Cancer Mayor, System. Yes. Could I ask a question? I, j I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, because I know the deadline for this is April 15th. Go ahead. Uh, and I know that there is an other um, organization within the municipality that might be seeking a letter of support. How would that work if we are not meeting before then? That's my question. Sorry. Um... I'll be, I'll so be speaking. As, as, as the CEO of the corporation, I could support it on behalf of council. Okay. Okay. I'll just make sure that um, but if I there's would, information for I would want to have a discussion with some members of council individually before I went forward just to make sure I had, well, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say how many, Councillor LeBlanc, we wouldn't want to uh, be holding an illegal meeting. That would be inappropriate. So. Okay. But I would want to chat with uh, members of council before I did something like that, just okay. to make sure everyone was, uh, um, or some okay. members were on, on board. I'll be speaking with this group on Thursday. Okay. So if, if this is something that they require, I'll make sure they get it to you ASAP. Thank you. Also, there there is a, a likelihood we'll have to have a special meeting called at some point to deal with issues. And if it works out in terms of timing, we could always include those kinds of things on that meeting. Deputy Mayor. Um, on that note, I just want to make sure um, we're here tonight. If we need to flesh out how that's going to work so we all understand, we do need to have that discussion just so we're clear on what you can do and can't do. And and uh, because no matter what, uh, things need to continue on as much as possible. We, we don't want to put everything, stop everything. So um, I don't know if there's an area or a spot that we can have that discussion right now is not appropriate, but uh, it would be good to just maybe be clear on all that. Um, I'm going to suggest um, that we do it immediately following the, the correspondence item we put on the agenda before we move into FII correspondence. We'll just have an open discussion about what very limited powers and authority I have as mayor. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Tadman. And maybe since we didn't really dwell much on uh, what the procedures were for council and boards, uh, could we also at that time open up for discussion sure. and how we can make, especially um, seniors that don't have computers, aware of what's going on? I think it's a good idea, yeah. So I'm going to move on now to the Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, correspondence moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, whereas people in our community are touched by cancer every day. And whereas for more than 80 years, people in our communities have helped the Canadian Cancer Society during their daffodil campaign raise funds for research that is helping more people in our communities survive. And whereas the Canadian Cancer Society is leading the change in the cancer landscape by empowering, informing, supporting, and improving the lives of Canadians living with cancer. And whereas the Canadian Cancer Society volunteers in our community join in our community join thousands of volunteers across Canada show, to show their support for people living with cancer during the month of April by raising funds through the sale of daffodil pins. And whereas the daffodil campaign also offers us the opportunity to learn about ways to reduce our risk of getting cancer and to celebrate our survivors and acknowledge the tremendous contributions of volunteers and donors. Now therefore be it resolved that we do hereby proclaim the month of April to be Daffodil Month. We will urge all citizens of our municipality to come together to prove that our community is bigger than cancer by supporting the Canadian Cancer Society's fundraising and awareness activities, by making a donation and wearing a daffodil pin during the annual daffodil campaign. We will also show our support by raising the Canadian Cancer Society flag during the month of April. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman. I was just going to say that I suspect that their uh, daffodil drive will be substantially down this year, so you, they might even approach us later in the year to extend it. Yeah, that wouldn't be surprising to me either. Councillor Tadman. We have had um, Karen White come other times, and I think, um, well, we're not going to have meetings to invite her anyways, but I think uh, um, 
because she's asked also for a phone call or an email to confirm that. Uh, I hope that we'll, as staff, do that and uh, congratulate her and, and tell her of our appreciation for all that she does for the Cancer Society. I, I believe that when we pass motions like this, uh, it automatically generates a letter from the clerk's office. Is that true, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were running away. That's why I caught you. <laughs> when we pass this motion, if we pass this motion, does a does a letter get generated through your office? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So she'll be she'll be made aware we've passed the motion, and of course, someone from staff will need to track her down to get the flag that we'll raise. So that'll happen as well, I assume. I think I've been in contact with her actually, so Good. she'll probably bring me the flag. Very well. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. And 15.3 is uh, two pieces of correspondence that are relative to the same discussion point, and the Deputy Mayor will speak on them. Uh, one from the DBIA and one from the Brian Todd Community Memorial Fund. Deputy Mayor. Uh, so I apologize for the lateness of this. Um, this project has been uh, worked on between the DBIA and the Brian Todd Fund for a little while. It's a really cool project. Uh, they just don't want it to stall. Um, it was going to come through the DBIA minutes uh, probably next month. Um, they just want to be able to continue on with it. If you just look quickly, you can see the sample idea of what they're doing. They're getting kids to make artwork and they're going to put them on, um, what do you call those? banners that will be hanged throughout the municipality. It's a cool project. They want to continue on. They just wanted, there's no money that they're asking for from the municipality, just uh, that staff will be able to hang the banners. So um, I'm not sure how through a motion we can just approve the information or, or whether we need to state that, that that's okay. Um, all, the, all the funds are being paid for, everything's being paid for th through these two organizations. So. Well, it would be appropriate to have a, a motion to receive the correspondence and authorize staff to hang banners for the for the art project. There you go. I'll second that. All right. Would you like to speak to that, Councillor LeBlanc? You're you're dying to speak to it. I know. Yes. The picture <laughs> from uh, Digby, Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's where the best clam bed, uh, uh, scallop beds are, Digby scallops. Yeah. It is also where the LeBlanc was building the uh, the condominium homes. That's where he was born and raised, which is 30 miles from me. Hang on, that hasn't been approved yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get people's knickers in a knot. <laughs> Can you give that wording again? I think I said receive the correspondence from the two organizations, and we can name them, and um, authorize staff, or and, and support the local student art project and authorize staff to hang banners. Or something like that is fine, yeah. <laughs> hmm? to keep it neat. That's my last point. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Council LeBlanc, seconded by Council Rowley, that Council receive the correspondence from the DBIA and the Brian Todd Memorial Community Fund and authorize staff to hang the banners. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And 
we have one piece of FYI correspondence. It's the update from Northumberland County. A motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. That Council received the March 5th, 2020 County of Northumberland update. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman. Just a couple questions. The first one revolves around the COVID-19. So the March 24th uh, meeting, public meeting for the development charges, is that going to be postponed? It's likely to be postponed. Okay. I received an email today, I and that, to that was the quote, likely to be postponed. So that's all, right. all I can tell you. Tomorrow's county, no, Wednesday's county council meeting is still on. And the second question, now I lost my spot. It was uh, said they had new updated entrance setback policy. What did it go to and from? Because it just it makes me think of the development or the property that was for sale north of the 401, and they could, didn't buy it because right. of the setback. What, what the county did was um, make their setback policy in adherence with lower the lower tier setback policy. So re, re, depending on what community, Coburg's in Coburg, the, the policy was made to. Um, uh, uh, mirror Coburg's and in Brighton it was made to mirror Brighton so it was a discussion with my understanding is it was a discussion with uh, lower tier staff planning staff yeah. go ahead so go back to door to the 401 uh, through you uh, mayor because we, we discussed it with you they went from our sort of going from 100 to 30 feet to 60 feet because we lost that development because of that hundred foot setback. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what the setback changed to north of the four hundred one. We'd have to look into the the bylaw. No, yeah. no, oh. I can, I can check, I can check that out for you. I can ask because that it was a hundred feet, and that's why we lost that development. They could make it work. At sixty feet, they could. And we only found out after we walked because the negotiations went with the county and the developer and the realtor. It never actually came to council. And and the MTO up there, don't forget. Yeah, well the, the MTO agreed to it. They already had their setback was correct. Anything further on that? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. We have no question period. Do, you, do we need a break before we move into closed session? Oh, right, we want a discussion first. I, for, sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, so, go ahead, Councillor Tadman. Well, my big concern with, well, one of my big concerns with all this going on is the people um, that don't have or use computers and go on the website, uh, uh, they're secluded enough as it is, and with the closing of so many things. I think we need to do uh, be more proactive in getting information out to them, whether that be posters or using, you know, some of the billboards we already have in town or or whatever, and also um, letting them know about things like the postponing of um, our, our both our water and sewers and and um, property taxes. Um, I, uh, for a lot of people, that library alone is their social outlet. So now they don't have that. They don't have the drop-in center downstairs, the ones that go there. They don't, you know, they can't meet the same as they were. So they're not getting information. So I think we need to be act proactive and 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 whatever whatever people have for suggestions. I think we need to move forward and do it. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I, I agree fully. Um, a lot of us do use social media, but uh, there are many who don't. And uh, um, I think we almost need to do some sort of a, something that goes into every mailbox. I mean, uh, just some sort of poster. Make sure it's posted on all the municipal buildings. Pull together all the information, everything we've talked about tonight, and we need to get it out because uh, people are fearful, and it's better for people to know what's going on. So that we do an, the suggestion is an unaddressed, essentially an unaddressed ad mail campaign or what's called neighborhood uh, mail campaign now. Um, postage alone would be in the fifteen hundred dollar range, and then you'd be printing on top of that. So everybody's, and as long as everyone understands that 
we're going to have to spend money on this. And I, I don't disagree. It's a good idea. I think we're in a situation now where, if, well, A, we've essentially lost our newspaper. We don't have anyone reporting on anything. Um, you can't, although I did hear Council Rowley say it was on the radio today. And I know Quinty Radio has been picking stuff up, so that's good. But not everybody listens to the radio. Locally, I know a lot of people in this community who strictly listen to CBC radio, <laughs> so they never hear the local radio at all. So, um, if if everyone's okay with something like that, uh, that kind of communication, do I hear any objections? Go ahead, Council LeBlanc. No, any objections? Okay. Communications manager, you want to speak to this? Yeah. <laughs> um, just a couple things. The uh, the press release today was sent to print and radio, so those uh, medians have been met. Um, my only fear with doing a neighborhood or a sort of a mail out would be that in a situation like this, things are happening literally by the minute. So today, for instance, in our press release, it said that this building and 67 Sharp Road are currently remaining open. Um, that could change. Uh, when I walk in the door tomorrow at 8 a.m. So we will do another press release. So I would just hate to um, do a mail out and then uh, have to do another one the day later because something's something's changed. That's all. That's that's just something we have to be cautious of. I, I, there's a way to um, there's a way to condense information and a way to make things generic, so maybe we don't run into that problem. But we do have to be mindful that this situation is changing literally all the time. And I, you know, I, I'm, you know, I haven't seen a lot of well, I've seen enough disasters in my lifetime now to know that this is like nothing I've ever been aware been a part of. Right, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I agree. So, I, you know, and I think we can kind of state a few of the things that we know, like wait, maybe wait a day or whatever. I don't know. State the things that we know, but then make it very clear on there that these things can change regularly. And this is where you can go to find out so that we're not doing another mailing. This is where you can go to find out. This is, you know, here, here, and here. And even just tell them it'll be posted on all municipal buildings if anything changes. If they need to get out, then they can at least come and read what's on the building. Some way just to have one mailing where everyone understands understands all those people who are like my parents who don't go on the, the web you know like they, they're seeing the news from other areas because they're watching the, you know whatever global or whatever but they're not knowing what's happening in Brighton so we need to do one one time we need to at least let it get it out there and then and then you know make sure they, they are aware of the website information uh, because even if they don't go on the website themselves I know lots of folks in the community who say I don't go on the website but I'll go to my neighbor and her grandson will go on for me and tell me what to do, right? So, right, well, but they can pick up the phone and they can call their neighbor and ask the neighbor to go on the website for them. But even if they know that yeah, we're going to have posters up at all municipal buildings, stuff like that, and, and that, that information, as long as, we keep, as long as we keep that information up to date, <laughs> that's the important part too. Councillor Bateman. Thank you. We could utilize the electronic board at the air. Yeah. Cake Edward Park as well, because anything that's on there now, other than saying the compacts is closed, I think it holds 10 to 12 messages. So you can direct people to the right. That's a good website idea, too. Or whichever. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Tadman. And I think um, a friend of mine. A friend and I were talking this morning uh, as as counselors and staff we should be cognitive of, of people who are alone who are really going to suffer because they're they're feeling you know Isolated. yeah and if there's anything uh, we could even put in that message that um, you know, if they need to reach out, is there places where somebody can go and get them groceries or their medicine or whatever? Yeah. Because there is people... Uh, I, I met a woman when I was um, doing uh, the, the cattle who told me she has no friends anymore. They've all died. Her spouse had died a few years ago. She was on a walker and her neighbors had brought her there and she was getting enough groceries for a couple of months because they were going away. And she has no contact with anyone. And I'm sure there's other people like that. So I think each one of us, if we just take it upon ourselves, people that we know, you know, just to give them a call and, and see if they, you know, need some help. Good idea. 
Mr. Hagman, did you have a comment? Just the, the main three messages from public health, from Health Canada, from the province, are to practice high, really, really good hygiene, um, to, pra to stay away from social gatherings, 50 people plus, and to call anyone in the vulnerable sector or reach out to anyone in the vulnerable sector that uh, could be alone. So uh, those are the main three things to, to practice in this time. Um, everything else is kind of just clumped into those three things if you really stop and think about it. And we can add that to our little mail out yep. as a portion of our mail out can include that information. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Uh, I know today there was a lot of adjustments and schedules and services and but I heard that the Meals on Wheels is even cancelled. Um, that's hitting the target right what you were talking about. People that are shut-ins and don't can't, can't, I can't really count on that and so I was shocked that that happened um, so quickly but I'm sure that the people who made that decision have their concerns and, and reasons and know they're dealing with food, they're dealing with people and volunteers so uh, but that's a service that would probably be greatly needed in a time like this. Supper's Ready is cancelled. Almost all the services have cancelled, if not all the services now, I think. Uh, Councillor LeBlanc. <coughs> to go back to communications, uh, a while ago we brought up about John that used to be here, John Upstrom. He now, his services, they hire him in Cranby, they hire him in Trent Hills to come and get the community channel. That's long term, but also for short term, like to give an interview to him or something. And I do not look at social media or Facebook. So I know that certain things happen there, so I, I miss those, but I always get the mayor's briefing. But it's to get it out. If it's a flyer, I'm all in support of it to, to get communication out. The other thing, when you were talking about people in need, uh, Councillor Bateman called me up that people were being quarantined because they had tested. They didn't know if they were positive yet. They had nothing to eat. So I had a pork roast in the oven that I had done Hawaiian style with mashed potatoes and turnips. So I took it all out of the oven and gave it to him. Be willing to share the recipe? Yeah, and he was there. And I had my great grandmother's 100 year old chicken soup recipe. And I had made a big pot because my wife likes it with stuff like this. So I gave them some of our chicken, chicken soup. And then he sent me an email for a family of six. He says, What was it? That man can cook? Not quite. He said, Not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Thank you, that's good work. Uh, just keep in mind that John Campbell writes for um, Crammy and Brighton Now, which is a website. It's not a, it's not actual, so it doesn't solve the problem of getting it out to those people who don't, uh, who don't have access to electronics, unfortunately. Deputy Mayor? Uh, no, it's just kind of along that line. Like, uh, there's a lot on social media. There's way too much on social yeah. media right now. So um, definitely we need to look at bringing this in, just taking care of what's happening in Brighton. And uh, that's a great story. I'm sure there are, uh, no, actually, I'm not sure that there's organizations that are going to take care of people if, if they need things. I really don't know what to do. I understand the mayor's um, um, calendar is clear, so we can add maybe his phone number and everyone just call him and he can deliver food. The mayor's calendar is certainly clear this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> there, One more story. No. <laughs> okay, quickly. <laughs> By, in Orchard Gate, a family reached out to me because I'm a counselor. And they decided they had flu-like symptoms and they had nobody to go buy their groceries. So they left an envelope on the table. I got my, the neighbor and we went out and we got three grocery carts and uh, thing and we put it in their garage and we did that on Saturday morning. Sunday I gave my, my supper to, uh, to work. Three grocery carts filled with toilet paper? No, oh, okay, just checking. I was wondering if it was you. I was just wondering if it was you. Councillor Tadman? Well, I think you should have won the award. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> if I can, uh, Mayor, through you, of course, to Council, I think it's really important, and as the uh, emergency management coordinator for this municipality, we need to be very mindful about communication, and communication really needs to be funneled through one individual, and that would be Ben. Yeah. Um, he is our communication in, in individual, and so to start sending a whole lot of mixed messages out there only confuses people, so anything we do need to send out certainly needs to go through Ben. Um, I can tell you that our uh, control group and uh, we'll be meeting tomorrow 
uh, afternoon just to have an update and a briefing on where we are, where we are standing right now um, and in response to the, the question or the remarks regarding individuals, individuals who are shut in I believe there are a couple of service clubs that are, are I've seen that out there that they will uh, if a name is given to them they will certainly follow up and do that so we can try and find that out and get that information to you okay Deputy Mayor I was just, just going to say if we can confirm that and then you know Ben can add that as long as they're okay with being on that circular then I think that people need to know because um, otherwise everything that they're used to is, is no longer even operating. Right. Councilor Bateman. I was just going to suggest possibly on the communication that goes out once this unfolds and I think you said midnight tonight restaurant shut down. In Toronto. Yeah. Oh, so that's just Toronto. Just Toronto. Yeah. So if it comes here, if it they do that here, it might be prudent to have a list of first citizens where they can have stuff delivered yeah. from. I think some might start offering that don't typically offer it if yeah. they shut them down. So then just to be clear, the chief medical officer of public health in Toronto uh, will, has issued a statement saying all restaurants um, will be shut down for dine-in. So anyone take out or drive through will still be open apparently, but dine-in. And that's uh, really in keeping with a what a bunch of the franchises have done already anyway. So, Councillor Rowley. Well, I think pretty well all of it has been covered, but I'm just there again to add to the communication uh, list that will be going out. If like community care and those kind of places, I know not 911, but there are other numbers through the county as well, right? I don't know if it's 311 or something like that, where you can uh, phone for certain information on services. Maybe we should just add all those contact numbers to to the letter going out. Not a bad idea. Councillor Anderson. Is this letter, after what Ben said, uh, this letter is still going to go out? Uh, you're not keen on it, are you, Ben? I, I think also we could, something we can do, I'll let Ben decide that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying it sounds like it's sort of spinning at the moment. Um, we can do press releases too. Like for next week, we can almost take it up to the edge of press time and and do a press release rather than ask the the media to to do a report. We put our own report in, but the the, the worry is that the media won't pick it up, especially with the, the current newspaper um, some regime. Go, something like this, they wouldn't touch it. I don't know. That's I'm, that's my worry. I don't know. All right. I don't know. Be Mr. Nice Hagerman, do you want to make a comment? I don't mind the mail out at all. Like I think that's a great way of getting our communications out. I'm just thinking of the administrate administration time um, that it's going to take to pull something like that off. We're probably talking about in the neighborhood of 10,000 documents or so. Um, 5,600 households. 5,600 households. Give or take. So, you know, it is going to be quite labor intensive. Um, so that's just something, another thing to think about. But I'm not telling you it's not doable. We just, we got to strategize, that's all. Okay. Will, Willow could use the business. <laughs> um, I'm sure Mr. Hagerman would reach out to any member of council who wanted to offer information. So uh, if you have information you'd like to include in in the in the newsletter information but keeping in mind the final decision of what goes in there will be mr hagerman's because there's only so much room in a printed piece right and we don't want a 32 page magazine here we want a one sheet out the door and information on where to get more information that's really what we're doing here Councillor tadman you've been waiting patiently thank you chief did that well you know these fire chiefs i know <laughs> Anyways, um, I didn't uh, walk up to the front door tonight. Uh, I saw that everything was closed, so I thought I have to come around to the back because I have been coming in this way. But do we have notices on our municipal, any of our buildings uh, th that they're closed and, you know, for how long? Because I can... I can think of people that even go to Codrington Tuesday morning that come from out of town. Right. And they they won't have a clue unless they've heard it on some news. So, Mr. McGee, you have your hand up. Uh, through your worship, um, uh, if you've noticed, some of the nonprofits use those uh, letter signs 
which work really well. So we can strategically put them, you know, through at the municipality or Coddington, you know, direct them to the website or uh, maybe with coordination of the economic developer, we can look at the messaging and I can get Thank that you. going forward. So that's a way of reaching out and it's not internet based too, so. Perfect, thank you. Um, to circle back to the question from Councillor Tadman, have we posted this in, what the closure information on municipal buildings? Uh, there's Jim would have definitely done a sign on King Edward Park Arena, but I'm not sure on the other uh, facilities at this point. So perhaps that would be a good idea to have one that is has the same message on every building. That way, uh, you know, we're we're getting the same information out, Deputy Clerk. Through you, Mayor, and uh, Councillor Tadman, you'll know um, service disruptions and things like that are part of our accessibility thing that would extend to everybody. So uh, this kind of planning has to be part of something that we're working on now to appease accessibility. So uh, we need to get those together. I think um, Preston's aware of that too. We've had a few conversations, but that's one thing we need to get together as part of our, our accessibility plan. Councillor Rowley. Thank you. Um, as I, I'm just wondering if council could have a copy emailed as soon as Ben has it done so that we have it before the mailing goes out so that when we answer questions or whatever that all of our communication is from one it's just not I'm not I don't want to guess at what might be in the letter right. so uh, if that could be done as as the um, as the letter gets ready to go out so either before or after, immediately after you send it off to print. Um, make sure members of council have it in their hands, please. Thank you. Yeah, but I'd Deputy like, to, we might have people, yeah, I'd, it, it's just good to have the information, just so that we're with, we're one voice, right? We don't want to, well, as you said, send mixed messages. Those, those of us who live outside the urban area are likely to get it two days later not than necess everyone else. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but no. my experience is it comes just a moment later than everyone else. David Mayor. Uh, okay, new topic. Um, sorry. <laughs> Is that my meeting or yours? Um, uh, uh, what I'm wondering, uh, uh, staffing, and maybe this is for the CAO, um, staffing, um, it, are we still at full staffing? Are some staff staying home? Are there any areas that we should be aware of that maybe won't be functioning at full? Or, and if they are, um, I guess obviously if that changes, you'd let us know. But I'm just wondering right now. Where Mr. Castleman? So the, the, the quick answer is we're going to have an in-camera meeting and talk about a number of different staffing issues and protocols. So that's coming up in the next 10 minutes or so. Anyone else so before we move on to the next subject that we're going to talk about, which is um, my authority uh, during the next 45 days or so? Councilor Bateman. Kind of a new topic, but not really. There's an email sent tonight by Lower Trent. Their offices are closed to the public. And all their events are canceled. I think they said up to including Easter, any outdoor, but all their outdoor areas remain open to the public, but washrooms are closed. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? So my authority, go ahead. That just triggered, uh, because I saw it on, uh, uh, what's it called? Anyways, Quinny, uh, the, they're, Lord, they're like Lord Trent, eh? they're the same. And they're, they're having all of their trails open. I think that's a good thing to recommend to people, too, that because it is important that people can get out. Yeah, and, of course, Presqu'il's open. The, the buildings are closed, but the... Yeah, get, waterfall park weekends itself. closed. Yeah, all the functions are shut down. Yeah, but the ducks didn't get the message. No, that, no right. they're all up around they the don't know. They don't know about this COVID thing. It doesn't yeah. bother them. <laughs> They don't, they don't know not to congregate in uh, groups of 50 or more. So um, as you know, through the Municipal Act, my authority is extremely limited uh, to act alone without uh, council authority. Um, I will make sure, and I'm sure Mr. Castleman will keep me in check quite well, that that, that authority isn't uh, doesn't go beyond. But my, my um, want will be to make sure I'm communicating with all of you on an ongoing basis so that you can keep me in check should that need to happen. And uh, yeah, I know you do. And so that... Uh, you know, we, we're, we're all 
frankly, so we're all rowing together. Uh, that's that's really my want. I, there's no there's no need for uh, one of us to be saying one thing and and three of us to be saying something else. So um, I I'm completely supportive of the concept of whatever we send out as a municipality. Council has its hands on it first, so that when the calls and questions come in, we're able to speak with one voice. I think that's important. Um, uh, Mr. Castleman, can you speak to the CEO's authority under the Municipal Act? It's, it is fairly limited, as I say. Well, uh, and, and it's something I've not looked at in a while, but certainly um, uh, the CEO's role is limited. Uh, you have one vote and you have specific items you can do which are very limited under the Municipal Act. I don't have them at hand, but if you like, I can send them out to you, but they're uh, uh, not overwhelming. No. The reality is Mr. Councilman has more authority operationally than, than the rest of us in this room, and we've delegated that authority to him by, by hiring a CAO, so um, that's why he and I tend to chat from time to time just so we both know what's happening from either side of our two offices, so uh, we'll keep doing that. Um, Chief, I wanted to touch on something that you mentioned. Originally, we were going to hold a, an emergency planning committee meeting tomorrow, but you noted that you're going to call the emergency control group together and just touch on the difference between those two things and, and your your thinking around that, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Mayor. Yes, uh, through you, Crystal Council, we, uh, we had called at one of our regular meetings and had posted that as such, uh, but in as part of our operational plan uh, for COVID, we have now cancelled all the uh, uh, committees of council. Emergency planning is a committee of council, so uh, that meeting in effect is cancelled, but uh, our control group, it's still very uh, vitally important that we, uh, that the control group meet to have discussion and just to bring everybody up to date where we're at uh, municipally and uh, um, so that's going to continue to happen tomorrow at 2. I uh, just had word uh, not too long ago, I think we've got, uh, we have our um, go to meeting accounts all set up so we should be able to do that remotely so that those that, that we don't have to bring everyone physically into the into the control center or into one room we can do that via computers or just a telephone that they can call in and participate in the meeting and be briefed that can that account has now been open so hopefully we can utilize that even through senior management or uh, uh, to uh, conduct meetings if if necessary at this point. Thank you. And Thank you. Chief, could you just for Council's information uh, tell us who's on the emergency control group? So from uh, from council, of course, the mayor and the deputy mayor, both uh, uh, the mayor and the, her, his alternate being the deputy mayor, sit on the, the control group along with the CAO, director of, uh, of uh, public works, public works, <laughs> and myself, and uh, of course uh, uh, our economic development director, Mr. Hagerman, as uh, communications, Patrick Silvestro as our scribe, as well as other community members such as. Uh, the uh, OPP have representation, um, the health unit has representation, the county has representation. Uh, any partners that we feel are necessary, depending on the type of emergency, uh, are welcome, are invited to sit at that table. And basically, uh, what would happen in the event that this this uh, particular situation escalate and maybe we see a direct impact strongly in this area we would then look at that and decide okay now we we're in a little different situation where it becomes an emergency a critical emergency for the municipality of Brighton in which case then we would enact uh, the we would put the quote control group into full action and declare an emergency which means then the control group basically runs the show we call the shots and we decide what happens uh, and with of course the mayor involved and he is the only he is the only one that can make that declaration uh, of an emergency so that's where we're at we're right now we're certainly it's in the information stage and we certainly hope that that's about as far as it has to go but uh, we need to keep everyone informed as we move forward so that's where we're at uh, for our meeting tomorrow afternoon thank you appreciate the update on that go ahead so just to follow up, um, as far as authority, you really don't have any. Um, so so we, we, have to, we, we have to meet if, if we're going, if we have something big to decide, but otherwise we're just going to count on Bob to make some really good decisions and then that'll be communicated to us That's if correct. need be. Is that kind of what we're going to do? That's the intent at this stage. Okay, as long as and, we're all And there if there is anything 
really big that needs to be decided outside of an emergency, then we will call council together in a special meeting. Um, the one thing I can think of is if we need to move forward with the MBBR and accept a, a grant or, or, you know, we're going to have to call a special council meeting and and uh, if we do that what we'll do is make sure we get a bunch of business onto that meeting so that we can get some work done for 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 staff so that they're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs right we wouldn't want that <laughs> <laughs> all right so go ahead it yep. has to do with your authority yep we already established it don't have no no we established it <laughs> i've already read what yeah. the, the, the ceo can do like you can't veto votes and everything like that so and you control good meetings yeah. control the meeting the thing is is when it comes to paying for his rubber tired high home now that that's approved it doesn't have to come back but Sorry. for certain things we don't want to stop this town from moving no. so we should give the mayor some authority to, to get stuff done. I, I the actually, deputy mayor and mayor and the CAO. I totally disagree. Totally I think, disagree. Yeah, okay. I do. I, I think the municipal act is established in Ontario to to provide a, a limited amount of authority to the mayor for good reason. Um, there are certainly some big city mayors that that want to a stronger mayor system like they have in the United States. I'm I'm pretty comfortable with this system, and I have no issue Council LeBlanc calling a, a council meeting together if we need to do that. I have no issue at all, Councillor Rowley. Thank you. But once again, just coming coming to or you know understanding something so minor as signing a letter. Does that just will that just then come electronically to everyone to say that we agree with supporting blah 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 that, that you would you would sign? If, to me, if, that seems kind of minor. If a letter is asking for municipal support and it's not you know supporting something that's completely offside, um, I'll, I'll sign it. I have no problem with that as long as there's no there's no financial um, uh, obligation okay. involved the there. If, if it's simply something similar to what we did tonight uh, with the questions that uh, Councillor Bateman had, um, what was what was that? I can't remember now. Oh, the curling club. With regard to supporting the, the curling club, you know what? I, I, I know this council will support th those kinds of initiatives, so I have no no issue with that at all. Go ahead, Councillor Anderson. Uh, this question is for the chief. On your agenda for tomorrow, you had also, because the committee's canceled, right, have flooding. Uh, uh, there's going to be a discussion on that. We Are you going to do that tomorrow as well? Yes, indeed. Uh, through you, uh, Your Worship. Yes, uh, Councillor Anderson, we will still have that discussion with uh, respect to flooding and where we're at. We, more of an information, where we're at now and what our plans are moving forward. And, and Because that discussion's been ongoing now for probably close to maybe almost two months that uh, CEO Castleman and uh, Director Parks and myself have been uh, having those discussions. So we'll certainly update the committee on that at that time. No, that's good because it's uh, around the shores of that one. <laughs> Very punny. <laughs> Very punny. Anything else on that? Um, do you want to take a little break before we go into camera? So it's you've got 10 minutes. 10 minute recess. Uh, motion moved by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Bateman, that Council resolve itself into closed session March 16th, 2020 at 7.59 p.m. To the Ontario Municipal, to the pursuant to the Ontario Municipal Act 2001, as amended subsection 239-2C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the Municipal Local Board, being the Brighton Industrial Park land, and B, personal matters about identifiable individuals, including municipal and local board employees, specific to medical services, and F, advice subject to solicitor client privilege. Specifically, HR policies as they relate to COVID-19. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council give a bylaw it's for second and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton Council, held on March 16, 2020. Is there any discussion? 
Any, all in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion's carried. And finally, moved by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Bateman, that the March 16th, 2020 Council meeting adjourned at 846 p.m. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. <laughs>